Hey y'all, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification button so you don't miss a thing. Also, come follow us on social media at Disney Food Vlog. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog and today we're gonna take you over to Caribbean Beach Resort because they have finally opened all of their restaurants. Everything's back, you don't have to eat out of a tent anymore when you're there, you actually get to eat in actual restaurants and we're so excited. So we were there when they opened on Monday, we got our reviews, we took a look around, we got a bunch of pictures and we wanna show you all around the new and improved Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort in Walt Disney World. Okay, the first place we're gonna take you is over to Centertown Market. Now, Centertown is the counter service location, and this is going to be basically their food court. Important thing to note about this one is that Centertown serves breakfast and dinner, basically. Lunch, however, they don't have the little stations open in the food court. They only have grab and go for lunch, which is weird and shocking, and I don't know why it would be that way, and I'm really hoping it changes. But as for right now, that's the situation. Breakfast over at Center Town offers some great eats. They've actually got a create your own breakfast bowl, which is really fun, kind of like Satuli Canteen, where you choose your base and your protein. You can have cage-free eggs and you choose your sauce as well. So breakfast bowls, they have vegetable omelets, uh, chocolate chip pancakes, chorizo and tostones benedict, which sounds really fun, pineapple banana pancakes, strawberry guava French toast, so lots of good eats that have that Caribbean flair to it. For the kids and the grown-ups, they have pirate Mickey waffles, which is really fun, because you know the uh, Caribbean Beach Resort also has those pirate rooms, so that's cool. There's a super interesting kids meal for breakfast, the cage-free egg popper, which is a hard boiled cage free egg pop with green bacon powder pirate green pirate juice roasted pineapple and bacon i don't know i've never had a, an egg pop before but there you go that's on that your kids can have that the next time you stay there <laughs> at center town dinner is going to be some great salad options good uh sandwich options there's a spicy tuna wrap taco trio a cheese steak eggless salad sandwich which they also have over at sebastian's bistro which we'll talk about in just a second when you see that the eggless salad sandwich it's basically tofu with vegan mayonnaise dijon mustard so it's kind of like a scrambled tofu basically several burgers Burger options, including a spicy jackfruit carnitas burger, which they are trying to say that jackfruit tastes just like carnitas, which it totally doesn't. Just gonna give you that heads up, but a lot of people love it. So if you are vegan or vegetarian, let us know in the comments what you think about the jackfruit equals pork thing. Um, I, I'm interested to hear. I don't think it works, but some people do. They've got pizza, pasta, and those bowls, again, the create your own dinner bowls this time. Overall, Center Town looks similar to, you know, kind of what Old Port Royal looked like last time before the renovation. The colors are more muted. You've got some more sort of seafoam green and sand tones and, and a little bit less in your face Caribbean, but they've got some great murals there right now that they have created that are very strong with pops of color and lots going on there. So you definitely don't lose the Caribbean feel even though they've toned things down a little bit in the look and feel. And in FYI, Centertown also has a specialty coffee area. They've got that grab and go area. And they also, this is where you're going to get your refillable mug at Caribbean Beach Resort. All right, now we're gonna head over to Banana Cabana, which is the pool bar. They have moved this and the table service restaurant, so they're right next to each other now. So Banana Cabana basically serves as the pool bar, but also as the bar and lounge for the table service restaurant. Now, Banana Cabana, I loved the old Banana Cabana. It was one of my favorite places to hang out, even though it was just a little tiny, you know, shack of a pool bar. The, the bartenders were always awesome, and I always felt a really good vibe there. So it was kind of sad that they were gonna change it. But honestly, you guys, they've made it so much better. Now, Banana Cabana is basically a place that I could easily see as a destination, a place that people who aren't even staying at Caribbean Beach Resort would wanna go over there. They've basically vibed it to be what they're kind of doing with like Geyser Point over there at Wilderness Lodge, where it's a pool bar, but it's basically a full service restaurant at the same time. 
time. Um, you can order the full menu from Sebastian's Bistro here. All the appetizers are on the regular menu here as well. Great seating, really comfortable stuff. They have like a couch hanging from the ceiling to sit on. So it's a great vibe, a really relaxing lounge type of atmosphere and definitely not just a pool bar. It, it, it functions as a restaurant for all intents and purposes. You've got those great uh, steel drum light fixtures hanging from the rafters. You've got those awesome curtains hanging from the ceiling. A lot of really great decor elements here that invite relaxation in a real chill atmosphere, but it still looks put together and well done. So I'm super excited about Banana Cabana now, even more so than I was about Banana Cabana before. On the menu here, like I said, there's going to be lots of those pool bar cocktails. The banana, the banana cabana is back, which is the mango rum, coconut rum, creme de banana, orange juice, pineapple juice, and grenadine. They've got the froze here, of course. Featured cocktails include an awesome pink guava colada that we tried, which has the Disney Select single barrel rum, which is Disney's own rum, along with guava, coconut, creme de coconut, pineapple juice, and a cruzan guava rum. So that was really good, not too sweet. We really enjoyed it. And of course, the Banana Cabana is a nostalgic favorite for us, having loved this location previously. But they have several other featured cocktails and signature cocktails to try as well, of course. The menu here is primarily going to be the appetizer menu from Sebastian's Bistro next door, but it does say on the menu that you can order anything from the Sebastian's Bistro menu during lunch and dinner hours. So that's really great if you don't feel like making a reservation over there or you're just hanging by the pool and you just want to have a relaxed dinner, you can actually get the full menu from Sebastian's next door. So while we were there over at Banana Cabana, we tried the Caribbean Pull Apart Roll which were awesome. And those of you who follow us here, you know that over at Ale and Compass, over at Yacht Club, they have those pull-apart rolls too, and they're the, probably the best thing on the menu. These are really, really great too. We love the guava butter. We didn't really care much about the mango chutney or the Jamaican jerk oil, but the guava butter here was awesome. We also tried the conch fritters, which we thought were really, really good. Basically like seafood hush puppies, essentially. And then the chili mayonnaise that came with them gave a little bit of a tartness, a little bit of a tang. We tried the Marauder's Snack as well. That one is kind of a, a mix of several of the items, including tostones, arepas, house-made crackers, and then there's a black bean hummus, guac, and pico de gallo. Nothing here really stood out, and for $15, that's a lot of money for an appetizer that is just kind of a couple of crackers and some pico. So this is not really recommended, but definitely, definitely go for those uh, Caribbean pull-apart rolls. Totally worth it. And the conch fritters were great as well. Next up, we're going to head right over to Sebastian's Bistro. And of course, this was shutters before the reno. They took out a lot of the crazy colors and um, like the insane decor that was going on here. And they've made it very clean, a very um, neutral palette now. You've got, again, those seafoam greens. You've got those ocean blues. And you've got a lot of Sebastian going on in here. There's lots of Sebastian pictures and artwork. It's quite a lovely atmosphere sphere to dine in. The menu here, of course, we talked about most of those appetizers from, from next door. We also tried here the Jamaican meat pies with guajillo chili sauce, which were fine. Probably not worth $10. We didn't love them. And we tried the crab cake here, which came highly recommended. It's $14, which is a little pricey for what you're going to get here. But the crab cake is very good. It had a lot of great flavor. It was packed with crab. So a really high quality crab cake. But I don't know if it's $14 worth. And then since we went for lunch, we also tried the crab cake topped burger, which came highly recommended. This was quite good, but the best thing about it was the crab cake. So get that for your appetizer and don't worry about it or get it with the burger. And then essentially you're only paying like $6 for the burger because the burger is 20 bucks and the crab cake alone is 14. So then you, I guess, get a relatively inexpensive burger for a table service restaurant. And they have the eggless salad sandwich over here as well. A grilled sustainable fish, banh mi sandwich, so a couple of good options for lunch there. Dinner at Sebastian's is going to be the same appetizer list. And then dinner mains are going to switch up a little bit. You're going to have a sustainable fish that's not in the sandwich. It's just straight up on the plate. Jerk butternut squash there for your vegan option. Citrus stuff, sustainable whole fish. 
grilled skirt steak chimichurri, which is also on the lunch menu, a Caribbean goat curry, they've got jerk chicken, which by the way, we did also try the jerk chicken salad, which we absolutely loved. We thought the jerk chicken on there was really, really good. The greens were pretty standard, but we liked the lime cilantro sauce. The cilantro was underplayed, which is preferable in my, you know, in my experience, but the lime was great with the jerk chicken. So that was really, really good. The kids menu at Sebastian's for dinner is going to be a create your own entrees, which is really fun. You can get the Jamaican meat pie, grilled jerk chicken, beef and mushroom blended burger, pork shoulder, and you get your choice of two selections of things like cauliflower fries with carrot ketchup, macaroni and cheese, pineapple cloud with banana and orange, vanilla gelato. So the kids get two sides basically and they can choose from a wide variety. So that's kind of fun for the kids menu. Desserts at Sebastian's are a mixed bag. We tried the mile marker zero, which is iced key lime pops with sea salt and a tropical fruit sauce. We loved these. We thought they were delicious. We of course are big key lime fans around here and I love that they were sort of coated in that chocolate. I like the presentation. $9 is a little pricey for this dish, but it was still really delicious. They hit the quality um, on the head, so that worked really well. So those are the three new dining locations in Walt Disney World's Caribbean Beach Resort. We're so excited to share them with you. We have full reviews of all of these restaurants over on Disney Food Blog, so be sure to go and check those out. Leave us comments. Let us know what you think. Are you excited about trying these? We can't wait to hear what you think about the new Caribbean Beach. Do you think it's worth it? Do you think the changes are positive? Let us know. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching, you guys. We're glad we could take you to the brand new Caribbean Beach Resort. This is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon. 